Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 on my tutorial on how to make custom meshes for Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, this one's going to cover textures, all things textures. Buckle up, uh, it's going to get a bit convoluted. Um, not much else to say. I recommend getting a um, picture editing program like Photoshop. I have an old version of it. Um, you can also use GIMP. Um, yeah, let's get started. I have uh, our mesh still open here because one thing we'll be doing a lot is we're going to be making use of. One second, I want to get rid of all this and this. We're going to be making use of Blender's texture preview. Uh, as that's going to help us a lot with making uh, making sure we um, get to see our textures as we move along. I've moved us over to uh, Blender's shading workspace. This is basically the best place to preview textures, in my opinion. Now, uh, I'm going to start off by just showing you how to apply a texture in Blender, obviously. As I said, this is just for previewing purpose. It will have absolutely zero effect on anything in game, just so you know. I'm just going to do that with a texture that I know I already have, which is Mizora's um, belt, which, uh, yeah, it's right there. As you saw, I just added uh, in this little window here uh, a new material. I go over here, select, as I add texture, image texture, drop that bad boy down and collect uh, color to base color. And then I press open. I find the texture I am looking for. Give me just two seconds to find that. There we go. Um, I reduce the specular all the way to zero and sometimes adding the alpha. Let's see. Well, I guess I didn't do anything here. Not surprising. So we have already, you know, secured one texture. That's one less texture we have to find, one less texture we have to paint for ourselves. So that's always nice. Okay. Moving on to the big one. How the fuck are you going to find a texture now? Well, if you've done any type of modding before, you might be tempted to just go, well, I mean, I've unpacked my data. I can just go into my texture folder and, you know, I can search up the name for um, what I started with, you know, the meshes we started off with and just find it that way. In some cases, you'll get lucky. Uh, in some cases, you will find that a DDS file with normal map, bump map, a PM map, PM map is that what? I don't. Know, doesn't matter. Mask cloth uh, is going to be found just in loose. I've had that happen to me about twice, uh, out of all of the projects I've done. Uh, that is because Baldur's Gate uses something called virtual textures. From my understanding, what a virtual texture basically is, is that it is one really really big texture where everything is like mapped out and then th the game knows where to grab it or something <laughs> i don't i don't understand it um luckily due to the people who made the modest tool we can unzip those not unzip it sorry uh unpack it um but it's big it's very big and there's a shit ton of them in there uh, and finding the one that you specifically need can be really difficult, but <laughs> I don't know how else to really explain it. Hold on. Let me show you. So when you've unpacked virtual textures, this is what you have, right? That's a lot. Now there is, however, a difference between a GTP and a GTS, right? And the GTS is what's really important. Um, that's what uh, we're going to be unpacking and working with. I'm going to show you how. Um, there's going to be lots of clips here. You know, I'm going to stop a lot because this is something that is, if you can't tell, difficult for me. <laughs> I'm not good at it. So I will uh, be back in a second. Okay, so how are you going to find a texture? Well, what you do is you search up the name in index search of the mesh that you originally used. In our case for this, it is the Shah uh, skirt. So I'm just going to let it search and I'll be right back as soon as it's done. Okay, so it has finished its search and we've got 23 results. 
Um, there is a mask cloth DDS, but I've already previewed it and it's completely black. And I think that either happens when it's an unused one or it's supposed to be that the file isn't, um, the mesh isn't supposed to be recoverable, but I know this one is, so I don't know. We're just not going to bother with it. Um, if we need a mask cloth, we can just make it ourselves. Um, out of all of these merge files, and there's going to be a lot, this is basically every single time what we've just typed in gets mentioned in any of these LSX. Um, and obviously it can be really hard to find the one that you need. I usually go for the one that has the most text in it, <laughs> the most mentions of it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to open this one up. I already have this one exported. Um, sometimes when I find that my merged LSX is um, clogging my Notepad++, which is the program we use to look at these, uh, I either have to use the export tool to, here we go, um, in this specific tab to export it again, and I just give it a different name. Um, depends on what you run into. But I already have this one exported as something else, so I can just go ahead and open it. Okay, we have got it open now in uh, Notepad, and I'm just going to go ahead and press Control F, oops, Control F, to open up the Find menu, and then I am going to type in this value. This is the name of our mesh. Same thing we used to search in index file. And we're just going to go ahead and make sure wrap around and that you're going down is ticked, and then go ahead and search. Okay, we got really lucky here. The very first uh, search that we had brought us to the specific tab that had what we need. Because what we're looking for is DTEX file name and then this specific string. Okay, this is what we need to find the right virtual texture deposit. Deposit? DTS. It's how to. Words. <laughs> anyway, if you for some reason uh, can't find this one, you're either in the wrong merged file or... Uh, your mesh is a variation that uses uh, the texture for something else. I've not wrapped my head around what to really do when you, you really just, no matter what you search for, you can't find it. Um, I, for one mesh, I got really lucky and I started just unpacking like crazily, like, like a, you know, ferally. I just started unpacking <laughs> virtual textures and I got really lucky and it was one of the first ones. Um, don't do that. That's a really, really involved and long process. But um, yeah, we have got what we need and I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, so the next step involves going into your modest multi-tool, going inside your unpack data, going to the folder that's virtual textures. You need to have the pack virtual textures unpacked for this to work. Go in here and just search up that string. And then I can see here that it's number eight, okay? Remember that all of this doesn't matter, just number eight. We then open up our export tool, go to virtual textures, and we find our way back into virtual textures. And here we go. These are DTS files, and we have to select the one with the number eight, because that's the one that we just had the value of confirmed, okay? Um, basic way to uh, remember this is all of these are like menus, I suppose. These are the over uh, arcing ones and these are the sub ones. And this one belongs to the number eight and that's why we unpack number eight. I hope that made sense. Uh, find a good folder to do this. I have virtual textures unpacked and I usually you know, name the folder um, after the virtual textures unpacked one. <laughs> Once you have that folder set up, uh, go ahead and press extract textures. This will probably take a while, so you know, get a snack and take a little break, and we'll be right back. Okay, uh, I didn't want to go through the process of unpacking a virtual textures folder again because it takes up a lot of space and a lot of time. I just, I know I have this un uh, unpacked already, so I'm just going to show you. So when you have a virtual textures unpacked folder, you have a shit ton of these DDS files. They are not labeled in any way that makes it easy for you to find them. They are labeled usually with, um, you can see here, 0, 1, and 2. 0 usually being a bump map, uh, 1 usually being a normal map, and 2 usually being a PM. Um, the mask cloth is I find uh, you don't usually find mask cloths inside of virtual textures. So that's usually 
why they are just loose in the game files. Anyway, what you're going to need to do is in that virtual textures pack, you're going to see a shit ton of textures. They're going to be for anything ranging from forage to cloth and armor to, you know, assets in the game. Spoiler warnings, by the way, you're going to spoil yourself accidentally by looking through textures. Um, and you're just going to have to eyeball it. Uh, I like to open up Blender and open up the UV map preview for the specific mesh that I am looking at. Because then I can, you know, very easily spot kind of the, the similar form um, that my texture will have. And then I just look through it until I find my specific texture. Um, I've already found these ones, so I can't really show what it's like to have that aha moment of finding them. I might actually, because I think it's pretty close here for me. Um, da -da -da -da. Yep, this is, for example, the one for the, the shirt part. That's not the one we searched for, but it's there. So yeah, it's it's really just about the more you uh, get used to textures, the more you've looked at the UV map, the easier it's going to be for you to spot them. But that's how you find them. Make a copy of them and put them somewhere you can remember them. Okay, I've gone ahead and gone back into Blender. And here you see the two textures I have grabbed in action. Obviously, though, first things first, we don't want it to look like this, you know, we, we don't we don't want that. And we also, we want this to be a recolorable mesh, so that that stuff has to go. Now, uh, I'm not going to go too in-depth into how to make these uh, texture edits, because frankly, that is just a skill you're going to have to learn over time. I am going to show you a little bit about what I do. Okay. So here's usually what I do when I have a textures bump map, but I don't like uh, here we go. Uh, I either don't like that it has a color scheme already. Mizora's texture is a good uh, example of that. Maybe I should have shown that instead of this one, um, because as you can see here, it it comes with a predefined color because it's not supposed to be something you can equip and that you can recolor. Um, so because of that we're gonna have to edit this a uh, really easy way to do this uh, would just to be uh you know go in and black and white it and then change the colors here so that you would make the scales really light and then boom you have something that would technically be recolorable most uh recolorable meshes um aren't completely black and white uh they tend to come with a actually this one is a pretty good example uh they tend to be in this sort of beige tone with some light colors to them already but otherwise being relatively gray or for example if they want to keep certain parts of it uh, in a certain way for example here they wanted to have this kind of bloody um, texture down here they are gonna just paint that on and leave that um so obviously we don't want to do that we don't want that and I'm going to show you some ticks, ticks? <laughs> tips and tricks on how to uh, edit textures. When I'm making a um, colored bump map into every colorable one, the first thing I like to do is I like to open up the PM or and the normal maps for it. So, for example, for this, this is a pretty good one already. I just copy paste that. I uh, went into channels if you didn't see that. And I just look for a specific channel that I think has, you know, the color, I should rather say the um, non-color version that I think is good. I grab that, put up a new layer, paste that in there, and then I will lower the opacity uh, and mess with the fill a little bit. And sometimes I'll also go in here and make it an overlay depending on what I'm doing. You know, mess around till it kind of looks like something similar to recolorable meshes okay um i'm trying to think of other tips um you can also make use of things like this uh where it has like a certain part of it where it's there's no outline of it and use the select tool um the magic wand select tool and try to copy that and add that on as well if you wanted to um I, I don't know how to better to explain it try it out and play with your mesh sorry your mesh your texture 
until it looks similar to a base game texture. Uh, I've already done that, so let me show you what I came up with. Okay, so this is the edited version uh, that I ended up having. Um, obviously, you can see I, I still have it look like, uh, you know, some sort of chainmail. I did that by using a mask cloth that I had uh, found for this mesh. Uh, did a lot of things with select tool and all that. Um, I, I don't know how to do a good tutorial on this really because it is just a matter of having learned how to edit textures. And that is something that, in my opinion, cannot be taught. It is something you have to just try yourself. So unpack a lot of textures, um, get in there and <laughs> try it out for yourself. Uh, using the UV map as an overlay can be uh, really convenient and uh, yeah, makes your process a lot easier. So let me go ahead and show you in Blender how all of this looks now that I've put it together. Okay, and here we are back in Blender with my two new edited textures. I also edited the shawl skirt using the same techniques I just discussed. And now we should have two recolorable meshes in, uh, yeah, in game. Uh, I'm going to show a little clip about what about uh, how this looks in game. And uh, yeah, that should be it for this uh, textures part of the tutorial. Um, not a whole lot I can really say about it. Uh, it's Textures are always an involved process. There's other ways to do it. You could uh, make use of um, Blender's um, uh, materials uh, <laughs> plugins that allow you to bake textures. You could use the texture paint if you wanted to, but you'd still run into that you need to be able to make your own normal maps, uh, your own PM map and your own mask cloth, etc. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say if you can, definitely try your best to use this method to uh, get get your hold on those good textures because as someone who when I started doing this was painting my own textures my god it takes a long time <laughs> all right okay and here we are in game as you can see we've got our mesh here there's still some light issues with the mesh itself because you know I haven't fixed those yet Yes, the path does lie before you, darling. And uh, here we have it. Yeah, it looks great. The textures look great. And just to show that it is fully recolorable, I've got all the dyes here just to show. Boom. There's actually, I think it works with the dye remover. It does if you re-equip it. Um, yeah. Looks great. Uh, to my knowledge, if I didn't like how the dyes are being distributed, you know, I, I, I want it to be um, different. <laughs> I could go into my mask cloth and uh, edit that so that it would uh, do it differently. Yeah, um, that's basically it. Not that much else to really say about it. Hope you all enjoyed. And I will be back with the next tutorial uh, showcasing what will I be showcasing how to actually uh, get it in as a custom item like I have it here yeah um, do tell me if you want to know how to fix normal maps normal maps uh, fucking hell face uh, orientation that's why this is uh, invisible <laughs> um, yeah all right thank you for watching bye